Pentecost we need the spirit to be fired up in all of us today amen brother uh, I was just thinking this morning that uh, uh, I wore this vestment this red vestment 51 years ago for my second mass here at St. Augustine so one remembers that uh, I just came from Father John Burke's uh, 50th celebration up at uh, Good Shepherd. He sends his love to all of you because he was wearing a vestment that he wore 50 years ago here in this church. <laughs> so uh, two of us have a lot of experience. And uh, I also remember, and Chris, uh, uh, you'll have to understand this now. Uh, one Sunday I said, everybody's got to wear red next Sunday. About 90% of the church wore red, but 10% of the church wore blue. <laughs> Y'all remember? Big John Yoakum, Nina Bedford, happy memory, all of these folks. They were UK fans. And I said, I guess the Holy Spirit in Lexington is blue. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> happy memory, all of those folks, too. So we gather today knowing that as a church we need to be fired up by the Spirit. Amen. Knowing as a country we need to be fired up by the Spirit. Amen. Knowing as the world that we need to be fired up by God's Spirit. Amen. So before we listen to that word of God today, obviously we have much to ask God's mercy for. Mercy, Lord, have mercy. 
God's mercy, let us give thanks, especially as we praise God in the Gloria. Sisters and brothers, as one family, let's pray together. O oh God, you who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with a divine grace that was at work, fill now once more the hearts of believers to whom the gospel was first proclaimed. We ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's now listen to God's word. A 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astonished, and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each one of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Emelites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual and manifestation of the Spirit is given some benefit. As the body is one, though, it has many parts. And all the parts of the body, though many, are one body. <coughs> so also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Whether Jews are Greeks, slaves are free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. to his disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Those who do not love me do not keep my words. Where? Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the third most important feast in the church's year, Pentecost. Easter is important. 
obviously the resurrection of Jesus, and that's number one. Christmas is second important, the incarnation, the birth of Jesus. But Pentecost, the birth of the Christian community, and the coming of the Holy Spirit, needs a PR agent, a marketing person, I think, because it doesn't get the same respect. We got Easter eggs and lilies, right? Got Santa Claus and presents for Christmas. But the Holy Spirit, doves, gets the short straw. And I think that's unfortunate. Because te Pentecost tells us a lot about who we are and where we need to go. Amen? Amen. And unfortunately, Pentecost falls at the beginning of summer when most of us are thinking more about school's out <laughs> and vacations are our focus. For parishes, lots of parishes, it's picnic time, mm -hmm. summer cleanup, mm -hmm. wrap up, planning for the fall, mm -hmm. transitions galore. And then there are graduations. Yet I really believe that we need the fire and the guidance of God's Spirit to keep us moving forward as a family. Now, comprehending God as Father, our Creator, that's pretty easy to understand for all of us, the source of all being. We've got images of that. God is an old man with white hair. <laughs> Not yet, brother. <laughs> it's relatively easy to understand God in human flesh through Jesus. We've got images of that, too, don't we? But the Spirit's more difficult. And so often, because of that, we kind of forget it or lay it aside. The spirit is more mysterious, less concrete. But sometimes we know when we got it, amen? amen. Or when we experience it. And yet it's hard to grasp. But I think our scriptures can help us with that. John's gospel we just heard is the exactly the same gospel we heard on the second Sunday of Easter, some six weeks ago. Back then, it kind of focuses on the mercy part, the doubting Thomas. But today, we focus on the gift of receiving the Spirit. After greeting the disciples, who were hiding behind locked doors, you would think that Jesus would be a little upset at them, a little ticked off with these clown disciples. Amen? <coughs> but instead, he greets them with peace and forgiveness, reminding them that one of the most essential ministries of the church family is forgiveness and peace-giving. But the only way we can be ministers of that forgiveness and peace-giving is being open to God's Spirit inside. Over and over again in the scriptures, Jesus reminds us about being close-minded. That's being self-centered, self-absorbed. We have to open ourselves sometimes to see, to feel, to think differently in new and different ways. Because God's ways are not our ways. Amen. Amen. Amen? We forget that all the time. And so we've got to come out of ourselves to be open to God's spirit. Moving within us and among the larger community of believers. 
Did you notice today in the gospel that the Spirit comes upon the community of disciples? It doesn't say it's an individual gift, although it is part of that, but it comes upon all of us together. Now, in our first reading in the book of Acts, we hear the story of Pentecost, 50 days after Easter. We don't know whether that's actually true or not. <clears throat> Sometime. Pentecost comes from our Jewish brothers and sisters. They celebrate Pentecost this weekend as well. It's a feast of the harvest. They are remembering God's covenant with God's people. I love you. You're my people and you'll always be my people. I am your God. They remember it was given to them the Ten Commandments. And it's interesting that in the Jewish celebration, there is fire and wind from heaven. Did you hear that again in the first reading today? God had made it them a chosen people who would spread God's message about a God who loved people, who married them literally in covenant. So our Christian Pentecost connects with our Jewish Pentecost with similar images about who God is. Now, in Luke's Acts of the Acts, the Spirit comes upon the community of disciples like a breath of God, like a strong, driving wind. We've experienced some of that lately around here, haven't we? Breathing new life into them and to all of us. And the Spirit comes like tongues of fire, symbols of God's presence all around us. It begins a new phase in human history. God recreating us at Pentecost, re-enlivening us. And with that Spirit of God, the church's community of disciples down through human history, spreads God's presence to every corner of the world in a multiplicity of different ways. Faith can be expressed in those different ways by word and deed. But Paul's letter to the Corinthians, I think, brings it even closer to home. God's spirit is diverse. It is expensive. Too often we want to make God in our image, in a little bubble. Everything looks like us sometimes. We don't think expansively, but too little. The spirit is what pulls us together in community, as family, as nation, as world family. I often imagine God's spirit like a, a force, much like the laws of physics. We think of centrifugal force, which is going outward, and centripetal force pushing inward. At times, God's spirit pushes us as a family outward onto others. At other times, it pushes us inward with a sense of bonding unity. The Spirit is always moving among us. And as the scriptures say, it moves in different ways and we can't control it. But we got a lot of folks in church sometimes want to control it. I'm not going to mention anybody. <laughs> God's Spirit calls us to a sense of unity even in the midst of all that diversity. We have to be 
open to that spirit. But we won't be able to use it. God's spirit is about creativity, inventiveness, wonder and awe, excitement and enthusiasm. You know, whenever you see groups of people acting as one people, there's God's spirit in their midst. Amen? Sometimes we can see that in family celebrations. You've all experienced that sometimes. You notice the enthusiasm and the engagement of people with one another. You see it sometimes in team sports, where everyone on the team is truly working together. Some of our best pro basketball teams lately are much more into team than they are into individualism. That's the spirit moving among us. One for all and all for one. God's spirit moves within us when we're truly excited about what we're doing and how we're doing it and what's the result of working together. Dull and boring people are not open to God's spirit. You ever notice that? Not here, of course. So often too many people live behind locked doors and locked minds. Frightened, hiding, just like Jesus' disciples. Amen? Pope Francis wrote about the Spirit recently, and here's what he said. I love this. Let's ask ourselves today are we open to God's surprises, or are we closed and fearful? before the newness of the Spirit. The Spirit would appear sometimes to create disorder in the church. Hmm. Make it a mess. Since it brings to us a diversity of charisms and gifts, yet all of this is a great source of wealth. The Spirit renews all things, Francis says. You can't be a Christian of pieces. A part-time Christian. We can't be a backseat Christian. No offense, no offense. Come on, come on. Or a couch potato Christian. Cozy in our comfort zones. The Lord always wants us to move forward. 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 And not take refuge in a comfortable, quiet life. That's our Pope. 85 years old, are you saying that? Hmm. I think our church needs God's spirit now more than ever. If we want to attract people to Jesus' message, we need to be people fired up with that spirit. If we want to re-enkindle the spirit within us, enthusiasm and excitement, that's what it's all about as a church family. Amen? Amen? Right here in Louisville. So come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people, renew the face of the earth and the face of your church. Amen.
since this is the birthday of the church, let's renew our baptismal promises. Do you renounce sin in your life so as to live in the freedom of all of God's children? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of both heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin named Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the Father's right hand? Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic and Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of our sins, the resurrection of our bodies, and life everlasting? Amen. This is our faith. Hopefully we are always proud to profess it in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now we come to God with our petitions, our prayers, our needs, pouring them out for not only for all the world, all of our church, all of our families, all of this parish and community. Let our response be... Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the church, may we faithfully confess Jesus as Lord and be guided by the Holy Spirit to continue to continue Christ's mission as we live our vocations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For a new Pentecost. May God pour out his spirit in a new and abundant way to renew humanity and all of creation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit of peace may unite and reconcile the peoples and nations of the earth, bringing an end to war, mm -hmm. hatred, and discrimination we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer that each baptized christian may develop more fully his or her response to all the gifts which the spirit bestows for the service of the body of christ we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for our own community, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the Holy Spirit who purifies us of sin and raises the dead may bring all our departed loved ones into the fullness of God's presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. And finally, dear Heavenly Father, for the spirit of reverence, wonder and awe at God's love for us, mm -hmm. we pray to the Lord. Lord, Good and gracious God, hear all these prayers and each that are in our individual hearts today. Lord, we need your wisdom. We need your creativity. We need your spirit in so many ways. Fire us with that spirit as we go about our daily tasks in our families, our workplaces, our neighborhoods, our city, country, and world. As always, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
mourner's bench I was filled with misery The same God that touched my mother He laid his hands on me That's how I know something got a hold on me Love the Lord, and I thought they were singing to me. Something hit me up over my head, ran down to my feet. That's how I know something got a hold on me. Oh, yes, it did. I said something got a hold on me. I went to the meeting one night. and brothers that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. Amen. Grant we pray, O Lord God, that is promised by your Son, the Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. And bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today, 
on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth to profession of one faith. And therefore, overcome by Easter joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, angels and saints, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. gives you praise for through your son the Lord Jesus Christ by the power and the working of the Spirit you give life to all things and you make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name and therefore oh Lord God we humbly implore you by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the very body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we do celebrate this Eucharist. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and again giving you thanks, he said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. And whenever you do this, do this in memory of me. The mystery of Lord our God, 
as we celebrate this memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the offering of your church family and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we may be filled by the Holy Spirit and become one people, one spirit, in Christ. May he make us to be all for his spirit, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your blessing. Especially the most holy Virgin Mary, Son of God, with Joseph, the Calvary, joyful apostle, and glorious martyr, with all the saints, and with conscience and confession of your church, even of us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and My sisters and brothers praying for the church, praying for all of those people suffering throughout the world, especially those who were suffering from violence. And so we dare to pray. grant us peace in our day that by the help of your holy your holy mercy we may always feel 
you may, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. You said to your disciples and you say to us, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church family. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. Amen. Please turn and share that peace with each other. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. take away the sin of our world, the old hymn who sends us his spirit, and happy are we who are called to the supper of Jesus. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word in my soul's name.
thing for you to do. Your hand is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. Your voice is calling me out. Right now, I know you're able. Jericho, and my walls are all crashing. 
things well oh, yes. uh, through his spirit yes. let's conclude our prayer sisters and brothers oh God you who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church family Safeguard, we pray, the grace that you have given us. That the gift of your spirit poured out upon our church and all of us may retain all of its force and that the spiritual food may gain the church's abundance of eternal redemption. We ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated for the announcements. Good morning. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. On Sunday, June the 19th, we will be celebrating our graduates. We will also have Confirmation Sunday on June the, 20, on June the 19th with it, refreshments following the celebration. There will be a meeting on Sunday, June the 26th at 10.30 a.m. for hospitality ministers. Please all, it's a very important meeting, um, please attend. Your church needs you. All the activities that go in church are a result of the work by seven ministries in the church. Two of these are evangelization and social concerns. Both are in need of new members. We hope you will pray about joining either or both of these ministries. Please see John Reed, Sabrina Lane for evangelization, and Emily Mosby for social concerns. Please stay around after the closing song today as we will be taking photos in our red Pentecostal shirts. Pentecost is known as the birthday of the church. Please join us for an ice cream social after mass in the Heinz Center. Finally, anyone celebrating a June birthday or anniversary, please stand so we may acknowledge it. <laughs> Virgil and Clarissa's 57th anniversary. There's no question that Virgil robbed the cradle, right? Ice cream. Ooh. The Lord be with you. May God's blessing be upon all of us as well as the Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace and serve the Lord well. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God.